welcome to North Yorkshire Safeguarding Children's Partnership LSP update for January 2024. My name's Catherine Morrison and I'm a Policy and Development Officer in the Partnership Business Unit. I will be doing the report for Hayden Rees-Jones, who is currently off work at the minute. Um, so I've added my email onto the front. Please do get in touch with me if there is something that you would usually contact Hayden for in the time being. Starting with some key documents for you, the North Yorkshire Safeguarding Children's Partnership Board Annual Report 2022 to 2023 was released in November 23. This report is a testament to our unwavering commitment to ensuring the safety and well-being of our children and young people across North Yorkshire. In a world where children face evolving challenges and uncertainties, our role as a safeguarding partnership is more crucial than ever. The report is more than a compilation of statistics and achievements. It's a reflection of our collective determination and the incredible work carried out by the board, its partners and the communities we serve. It offers a comprehensive overview of our activities, successes and the challenges we've encountered, as well as our plans for the future. Throughout this report, you'll find insights into the collaborative efforts that have enabled us to create a safer and more nurturing environment for children and young people in our county. The report includes information on partnership achievements linked to being young in North Yorkshire, the partnership awards that are presented over the year, updates on subgroup work as well as audits and training, the information about how the partnership listens to the voice of the child and uses this voice to seek assurance that what we are doing always remains child focused. The financial position of the partnership is also shared, as well as the priorities for the coming year. These are strengthen the role of education in the partnership, um, children and young people's emotional and mental health, and promoting positives of online engagement while minimising the risk children and young people face online. A new and updated version of Working Together to Safeguard Children was released in December 2023. This statutory guidance from the Department of Education sets out what organisations and agencies who have functions relating to children must and should do to help protect and promote the welfare of all children and young people under the age of 18 in England. The 2023 edition replaces Working Together to Safeguard Children 2018, which underwent a limited factual update in 2020. This new edition of Working Together is central to delivering on the strategy set out in Stable Homes Built on Love 2023, which outlines the government's commitment to support every child to grow up in a safe, stable and loving home. A summary of some of the key additions to the guidance. A new chapter a shared responsibility highlights how positive outcomes for children depend on strong multi-agency working. It introduces a set of multi-agency expectations for all practitioners involved in safeguarding and child protection. These expectations aim to ensure that practitioners share the same goals, learn with and from each other, have what they need to help families, acknowledge and appreciate difference, challenge each other. The updated guidance sets out four principles that professionals should follow when working with parents and carers. These are effective partnership and the importance of building strong, positive, trusting and cooperative relationships. Respectful, non-blaming, clear and inclusive verbal and non-verbal communication that is adapted to the needs of parents and carers. Empowering parents and carers to participate in decision making by equipping them with the information keeping them updated and directing them to further resources and involving parents and carers in the design of processes and services that affect them. Multi-agency safeguarding arrangements. The updated guidance outlines new roles and responsibilities related to the three safeguarding partners, the local authority, the police and health services. The head of each statutory safeguarding partner will be referred to as the lead safeguarding partner or LSP who will in turn appoint a delegated safeguarding partner. It is also inspected that all local education and childcare providers working with children up to the age of 18 will be included in local arrangements. Statutory partners should con consider including voluntary, charity, social enterprise organisations, childcare settings and sports clubs in their arrangements. 
providing early support and protection. This section is split into three subsections, early help, safeguarding and promoting the welfare of children and child protection. For early help, there is a call to consider child family needs in the context of early help and work closely with education and childcare settings. For safeguarding and the promoting the welfare of children, social care assessments should consider parent capacity of both resident and non-resident parents, as well as other adults responsible for the child's needs, including the wider network and the community environment. Clarity of the role of lead practitioner is also shared. It also references supporting disabled children and their carers and the issues around harm outside of the home. For child protection, the guidance sets out a series of national multi-agency practice standards for all practitioners. Following from the updates in working together around working more closely with school, op op schools, October saw the second of the partnership designated safeguarding lead conferences. The day saw keynote speakers from Dr Jill Kelly talking about supporting children with adverse childhood experiences and Professor Simon Hackett talking about harmful sexual behaviour. Breakout sessions were available to delegates throughout the day, exploring a wide variety of topics, including child protection conferences, CAMS and mental health, the role of DSL in schools, further developments in multi-agency child exploitation, young people gaming and gambling, thresholds and early help. Lunchtime surgeries were also available from the LADO, the voluntary and community sector, SEND, North Yorkshire Police School Liaison Team and the School Safeguarding Advisors. A multi-agency marketplace was also available for delegates throughout the day with information stalls from 18 partner agencies. The day was attended by 154 delegates and feedback from the sessions was very positive. Following an initial meeting in September, a terms of reference has now been established for a working together education group. The group is established to explore the need for education to have a greater involvement in local safeguarding children partnership arrangements, as stated in the new working together document. It aims to develop the already excellent working relationships with local schools, both academies and maintain schools, primary and secondary, and explore how education can be better represented in partnership subgroups. The group will also develop plans regarding levels of attendance, exclusion and suspensions, and explore the links with this and the risks of children at risk of exploitation. The group will report to the practice development subgroup and will be chaired by Julie Bunn, who is our virtual school head. A reminder to partners that you can access all of our procedures, practice guidance and one minute guides on our website and I've added the QR for you to scan for your convenience. We know it can be hard to hold all the safeguarding information that we share, that we share but it's key to remember that if you do want to find out more about a particular topic or theme that the relevant and up to date guidance is available for you here. Similarly, I've added a link to our training page where you can access information about all upcoming training courses available to partners. We have masterclass coming up in February with learning from the LADO cases and our March masterclass will be focused on the launch of a new multi-agency child exploitation and contextual safeguarding strategy, which launches to coincide with Child Exploitation Awareness Day on the 18th of March. A reminder as well that all of our masterclasses are recorded and available on our YouTube channel for you to watch back. We are in the process of planning our schedule of masterclasses for the rest of 2024. So if partners have anything that they would particularly like us to cover, please do get in touch. A key update for you in relation a key update for you in relation to the sharing of, an, of intelligence. This is such an important tool in the disruption of abuse and exploitation against young people right across the county. Um, it's a key and safe way to share information, for example, regarding concerning incidents or suspicious activities, unusual exchanges that are seen or something that makes you as a professional feel uncomfortable. It gives all professionals a safe and direct way to share this information securely with North Yorkshire Police. 
Now, it doesn't supersede safeguarding referrals and concerns about a child. Um, you would follow your usual safeguarding procedures. Um, however, now the um, intelligence sharing form is now an online form. Um, so you can use that form to share information about things that just as a professional makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, conversations that you may have picked up in the community or through conversations. Again, that vital piece of the jigsaw that can help us put some disruption plans in place. So as I've already said, um, the change is that this is now an online portal form. Um, previously, you had to download the form, um, fill it in and then upload it via an email. So this is a much quicker um, and simpler way of submitting that intelligence. So again, I've included a QR code, which um, please save and share um, across your professional partners. This will take you straight to the police portal. We've also updated our guidance document um, in relation to the sharing of intelligence, which is available on our website as well. So if you have any questions about what you submit or how you submit it, you'll find it on that document. Now, this portal is part of a larger partner services portal. So there's services for agencies and partners of the police. This is not for public use, um, but also in uh, includes things like a request for a welfare check, reporting a missing person or adding information to a missing person report. Finally, a reminder to partners that all our key links, including our social media channels, YouTube page, and how you can access the podcasts, etc., are all on this slide. Um, I've included a QR code to scan for you to sign up to our monthly e-bulletin where we share key safeguarding updates for partners. Um, so, for example, in January, we focused on online safety and shared key ways for partners to support children to stay safe online, um, especially as a lot of young people may have received new devices over the Christmas period. Please, as always, continue to share key information across your teams and networks and get in touch with us if there's any further information we can provide you with. Thank you. Hello, this is North Yorkshire Safeguarding Adults Board Quarter 3 update for the Local Safeguarding Partnerships. The North Yorkshire Safeguarding Adults Board Development Day was held on 17th of November 2023. Updates were given on North Yorkshire Council's preparation for the Care Quality Commission's inspection process. This included a mock inspection undertaken by Dr Carol Tozer, a former inspector and director of Adult Social Services. Following the inspection, a number of recommendations were made. The board considered the areas highlighted under ensuring safety domain and suggested further areas for consideration. North Yorkshire Council will ensure that the board partners are made aware of the ongoing process. The Safeguarding Adults Board also carried out work to consider the trends, emerging issues to inform a review of the priorities. A number of key themes were identified for consideration, including domestic abuse with an increased focus on male victims, self-neglect and hoarding, trauma-informed care, people with complex lives and influence beyond capacity, homelessness, loneliness, violence amongst young people and gangs. There is new practice guidance which has been produced on understanding fabricated or induced illness in adults. This will support practitioners in all organisations to understand and respond to suspected, fabricated and induced illness in adults and is available on the following link. Guidance on the development of safeguarding adults policies and procedures, including adult safeguarding policy template, has been updated and is available on the SAB website on the following link. A self-assessment checklist tool for smaller partner organisations has been developed with colleagues from the voluntary community sector, North Yorkshire Safeguarding Adults Board and North Yorkshire Safeguarding Children Partnership. The VCSE checklist is available on the SAB website on the following link. In August 2023, the Home Office revoked the licence for Comforting Hands Recruitment Limited to use the overseas sponsorship scheme for their care workers. 
This was due to concerns raised regarding quality staffing and financial returns. North Yorkshire Council did not, ha did not have advance notice of this and therefore a multi-agency crisis response was enacted to ensure that all care was covered following the existing provider failure and service interruption process. This was successful and demonstrated effective multi-agency working and significant dedication from all staff involved. A reflective review report has been completed, which found good practice and some areas of learning which will be shared across the board partners. We will widely encourage people to access resources on modern slavery by the Gang Masters and Labour Abuse Authority website. Link is available below. A Safeguarding Adults review for Elaine has been completed and signed off by the Safeguarding Adults Board in December 2023. This will be published on the SAB website in early February 2024. This SAR looked at issues around alcohol use and self-neglect for an older adult. The recommendations include moving away from a culture of viewing people using alcohol as making lifestyle choices. The use of assertive outreach models in professional practice, ensuring a better understanding of executive capacity during mental capacity assessments. There are a number of resources available on the Safeguarding Adults Board website. You can find out more information about the local safeguarding partnerships, details of the chairs, business support and previous copies of quarterly updates. We have a number of one minute guides. We have keeping safe resources and leaflets. There is a training directory. And of course we have copies of uh, the Safeguarding Adults Board procedures available online. You can sign up to receive the SAB newsletter. We have Twitter at NYSAB1. So there's lots of resources to access. Thank you. North Yorkshire Community Safety Partnership Update. In October, we've seen Hate Crime Awareness Week. The campaign was coordinated through a task and finish group on behalf of the York and North Yorkshire Inclusive Communities Joint Coordinating Group. And this demonstrated positive engagement and good involvement with partners. Disability Hate Crime was a focus for this year's campaign and a resource pack was shared with partners, which included social media messages throughout the week a joint press release and internet key messages. There was also local joint engagement activities across the areas, which were supported by the community safety hub leads and partners. Awareness sessions were also provided through the five days, which looked at autism, hate crime, misogyny, LGBT hate crime awareness, trans awareness and equality and diversity and inclusion. There was over 100 attendees from a variety of partners attending these sessions and there was also a separate session run on behalf of North Yorkshire Council Adult Social Care and this session is now available as a resource on the North Yorkshire Has Practice Library. An evaluation survey was circulated to those who were involved and attended the sessions during the campaign. As you can see from this slide, there was very positive feedback from being very engaging and thought provoking and positive to excellent delivery and more overall awareness. This slide just demonstrates the positive engagement and activities that were demonstrated throughout the week of the campaign. The Arthur North Yorkshire Modern Slavery Partnership have provided the following resources in support of Anti-Slavery Day which took place on the 18th of October. These can be accessed through the QR codes. There is a QR code for Myth Busting Modern Slavery podcast and a Modern Slavery Awareness Masterclass. We now have available a Hate Crime Awareness and Hate Crime Champions Accredited Scheme for organisations across York and North Yorkshire, which is available to access free of charge. This awareness programme will be jointly delivered with North Yorkshire Police, North Yorkshire Council and the City of York and is accredited by NCFE and each attendee will receive a certificate. 
overall aims is to raise awareness of hate crime and support services available across North Yorkshire and the City of York, while also increasing reports of hate crime. A delivery plan is in, is in existence and if any organisation is interested in accessing this training, please contact myself at lesley.gray at northyorks.gov.uk. We are hosting a session on the 26th of February at the Civic Centre in North Allerton and this is available to all partners who work across Richmond, Richmondshire and also the Hamilton locality areas. If you're interested in attending this session, please contact Tracy Horseman at northyorks.gov.uk. Prevent Training Offer for North Yorkshire. If you'd like further information on the prevent training that is being offered, please access the QR code or visit the link below. Also for information resources for education settings on the Israel and Hamas conflict, please also click on the QR code. Thank you for listening.